Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Pittman Training, how to kickstart your medical admin career. So we're just waiting for everybody to um, find their seats and join the webinar today. So thank you and a warm welcome. We'll just um, hang on for all of our guests to, uh, to dial in. Okay, forgive me if I keep repeating myself, but welcome. I can see the numbers are going up. Everybody's coming into the webinar now. So good afternoon and welcome. We will start the webinar in about two minutes time. So we'll let everybody, uh, we'll let everybody find their way in. So we're so pleased everybody could join us for today's webinar, how to kickstart your medical admin career. And I'll, I'll run over the, um, I guess our objectives in a moment and the, the order of the day, what we're going to try and cover. And um, don't worry, we're not, we're not uh, keeping you all afternoon. We'll be um, nice and snappy with our conversation, maybe 45, 50 minutes all in, and we'll get started in about one minute from now. So. Welcome to everybody who is, uh, is still joining. So just while we're waiting for the last few people to arrive and welcome if you've just dialed into today's webinar. Um, but for everybody that's, uh, that's already um, joined us, if you feel free to click on the chat function, uh, which you should find either at the top or the bottom of your screen or your device and just say hello. Let us know where you're dialing in from and um, yeah, let us know your name. So welcome to everybody. Hey, hello to everybody. So, yeah, lots of people from all over the UK. Um, hello to Nikki. Hello to Rizma. Lots of people in um, Ireland as well, dialing in from Ireland. And um, I, I can see a few people from parts of Europe and um, even from Kenya as well. We've got some guests from Kenya here today. So um, good afternoon to everybody. So, look, I think um, we should make a start. So, uh, yep. Everyone seems to have arrived now. So hello and welcome. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and welcome to today's webinar, um, how to kickstart your medical admin career. So um, let me just run over the, uh, uh, I guess, the agenda for today's discussion. Okay, and let me start by introducing myself as well. I'll be your host for today. So my name is Paul Lewis, Managing Director for Pittman Training. And um, I, I can honestly tell you, myself and my team um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy supporting thousands of students every year um, to, I guess, open up a new career or to advance their career, whatever line of work that might be in generally wrapped around office-based skills, office-based um, careers. Uh, today, we're talking about medical, uh, medical administration, um, but we also offer things like um, IT technical, uh, web design, marketing, social media, legal, um, administerial, secretarial, the, the list goes on. So um, today we're focusing on medical administration. Um, so welcome to everybody who's just joined. Um, as I mentioned, the webinar will run for 45, 50 minutes and we'll try to go through at a um, brisk pace. I appreciate lots of you maybe on your, your lunch breaks or perhaps you've taken a, a bit of time out of your day. Um, we ask you 
please to stay to the end, um, only because we've got some important updates and, and we wouldn't want you to miss those as we get towards the end of the webinar. Um, we will make this um, webinar as interactive as we possibly can. Um, how are we going to do that? I hear you ask. Well, we've got a few different ways. So I've already mentioned, uh, we've got the chat function, which I can see really buzzing already, actually. So yeah, keep on uh, jumping on the chat function. Tell us, uh, you know, who you are and where you're dialing in from. Um, also, we've got a series of live polls, uh, and I really love these actually because um, whilst we can't necessarily talk to everybody today um, in a you know in a live sense, and we can't turn on people's cameras, there's just too many of us to be able to do that. Uh, we can let you have your say via our live polls. So um, you know, look out for those; they'll be coming up in a short moment. Um, we've also got the Q and A function, and um, what I'm going to say on this is the chat function is, as it sounds, just chat, and we may not be able to monitor all of that. But if you use the Q&A function, and if you're not quite familiar with um, Zoom, it will be in the same bar at the top or at the bottom of your screen, and it says Q&A, and that actually registers a, a real question with us, if you will. And my team, my uh, colleagues in the background will be monitoring all the questions that you um, send over to us. And feel free, use your imagination. You can ask anything you want to ask. We can't guarantee that we'll be able to answer every question. Um, but what we will try and do specifically, I've got three um, lovely guests joining me today, and I'll introduce them when we, uh, when we get to that point. Um, but if you put your questions in as we're talking to one of our special guests, we will try and acknowledge your question if we can. Um, the webinar will be recorded and we're more than happy to share that with you afterwards, especially if you've got a friend or a colleague who maybe wanted to join but missed out. So what is today's discussion? I've already said it's how to kickstart your medical admin career. Um, also welcome, I can see a number of people have uh, joined in the last few minutes, so you're in the right place and uh, we're happy to, uh, happy to see you. Um, we've got two ex-Pitman students um, who have, uh, I guess, been in your position looking to change their career and advance their career uh, with Pitman Training's help. So we'll be hearing from Adele and Noel in terms of their story and their journey. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we'll talk about what sort of jobs, you know, medical administration is, is a catch-all. It uh, covers a huge um, spectrum of different jobs in different environments. So we'll, you know, we'll come on to that. Um, what skills and experience um, might you need? What training and what qualifications might you uh, need as well? Um, how to gain that competitive advantage? You know, I guess it is competitive when you're applying for jobs and uh, having interviews for jobs. Uh, it is quite literally a bit of a, a bit of a race, and only one person in in most cases can can get that job. Um, and how can we help? That's really the kind of backdrop today. Uh, we want to help as many of you as we possibly can. Okay, so moving swiftly on. Um, We've got a question for you, which um, you know we would love you to try and answer. Uh, what do you think uh, are the main responsibilities held by a medical administrator? I appreciate that's a you know big, broad question. We'd ask you to use the chat function in order to give us your answers on this one, please. So um, if you kind of jump on there now for me and just let us know, in your opinion, what do you think the main responsibilities would be for a medical administrator? And I'll just try and read a few of these out if I can. Someone said discretion. That's a, you know, it's a really good point, isn't it? Because we're dealing with, um, you know, confidential information, patient information. Uh, someone's asked if they can get a copy of the webinar. Absolutely, it's being recorded, by the way. So we'll we'll send that to you afterwards. Don't worry. Confidentiality. I'm seeing that a lot of times. Discretion. Maintaining patient records. I think absolutely right. Patient care. Record keeping, timekeeping, communication. I'm really pleased to see that. Yeah. Certainly when I think about medical administration, I think it's it's a blend of wonderful communication and, um, uh, you know, also record keeping and, um, you know, that that administration side of the role. Attention to detail, empathy. Yeah, it's a really good point, isn't it? Great people skills integrity yeah that's great actually so i like the fact there's hard skills in there and some soft skills as well i think really really important isn't it 
lots of um, record keeping. I think that that's the common theme. So look, I'll, I'll leave it there, but thank you. You're, you're all kind of thinking along the right lines. Um, and I've got some more questions for you as well. I promised you that we would uh, make this as um, interactive as we possibly can. Um, and I kind of, uh, I skimmed over our objectives there at the beginning, um, but I want to try and make sure uh, my job today, by the end of our conversation together, is that you've got some advice, some insight and some tips, I suppose, that you can take forward to progress your own career. Um, so I want to understand a bit more about where you are in your current position. So if you could um, take part in our poll and my wonderful colleague will put this on your screen. So um, if you haven't already, you might need to expand your screen. The poll should be there in the middle. Which of the following best describes your current position? So is it number one, you've, you're in a job, but you'd like to work in a medical admin role instead. Maybe you haven't got a job and you'd like to pursue a medical admin role. Maybe you're already employed in medical admin or actually none of these apply to you and you're just here because you're curious. <laughs> so not wanting to pursue a career in medical admin at all. Um, I'm guessing that one will be quite low. So if you cast your votes, maybe another couple of seconds to do that. Interested to see, you know, we've got hundreds of people on, on our discussion today. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm guessing the first couple will be uh, the most popular. So and here are the results. I hope these are showing on your screen. So yeah, not surprisingly, 51% uh, of our audience are in a job, but would like to pursue medical admin instead. Um, and then the, yeah, the next majority is 35%, is uh, not in a job currently, but would like to pursue medical admin. That's great. And then a few, that's good. So uh, maybe we can get some uh, comments and some input from the 6% of people that are already in a med medical admin role. And then there's 8% who are here just um, to pass the time. But look, hopefully we can add value to you as well. So thank you for taking part in that poll. And I really, really hope, hope uh, for the, certainly the 50% of people that are, um, you know, wanting to pursue um, a medical admin career that we can give you some great insight. So thank you for that. And uh, you're not off the hook yet. We've got three polls and we're going to run them uh, one after the other. So what do you believe in your opinion is the biggest barrier to getting hired in the medical admin field? So we've got multiple choice for you. Again, we're asking you to pick one if you can. So what's the biggest barrier to getting employed in these roles? Is it lack of skills? Is it lack of experience, work experience? Is it lack of confidence? Could it be the employer's prejudice? They look at the age or background or, or whatever it might be. Um, or are there just too many applicants and not enough jobs? So if you cast your votes, we'll just give you a second to do that. I'm guessing this will be probably a spread across all of them, but maybe one of them will pop out. So thank you for doing that. And if uh, we can put the results there. Okay. Wow. Okay. So there is a clear front runner. Um, most of our guests today believe that lack of work experience is one of the biggest barriers to getting hired in one of these jobs. Lack of skills is there as well as, uh, as number two. And then too many applicants, not enough jobs, but there's not too many people uh, that feeling that one's an issue. And um, good to see, actually, the real minority saying that there isn't any prejudice from the employer. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's good to see. And maybe it's, uh, uh, I think, better from one industry to the other as well. And we would expect, wouldn't we, the, uh, the kind of medical and healthcare industry to have probably more empathy or show more empathy than some other uh, lines of work. So I think that's, uh, you know, really, in oh, and lack of confidence. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, come to that one. Uh, only a few people saying lack of confidence. But yeah, again, we'll try and come back to the top, you know, the top answers here as we work through our discussion, lack of experience and lack of skills. What can, what can you do to, to, I guess, um, help yourself on those two things? And what can we do as your partner, Pittman Training, to help you in those areas? So thank you to my colleagues for helping me on the poll there. Um, this is the third and final um, poll, but uh, 
I hope you hope you enjoy this this part of the uh, the webinar, and we will, I promise, get into the uh, the real detail in the uh, in the coming moments. So, which of the following skills or training do you feel would help you to get hired in a medical admin role? And there's quite a few choices here, so we're asking you to pick your top two. Okay, so which of the following skills would help you to get hired in, in a medical admin role? So we've got certified training certifications. We've got uh, Microsoft Office being proficient with the Microsoft Office suite, medical terminology courses, fast typing, IT computer skills, that's a bit general, communication skills, audio transcription. Now, some people might not even know what that means at this point, but we can open that one up and numerical skills, um, uh, AKA being really good at maths. <laughs> so yeah, if you cast your two top votes, please. I'll give you a few extra seconds on this one because it's quite a, um, quite a big question. And I apologize, we probably should have said other as well. Maybe there's, uh, there's something else that would uh, need to be on there. So if that's everything, we'll, we'll have a look at the, um, the results now. Okay, so um, just in front is medical terminology courses. So that is um, no surprise to me. And, and we can talk about uh, medical terminology throughout our discussion today um, and certification. And maybe those two go hand in hand as well. If you're able to show your potential employer that you understand medical terminology because you've, you've studied it and you've got a qualification or a certificate to go along with it. And... Um, I think almost neck and neck are Microsoft Office and communication skills. So um, yeah, I'm not not surprised by by that. And IT, I think, is uh, is crucial, isn't it? Wherever you go, whether it's medical admin or, or any office um, office based role for that matter. So again, you know, it's my job to try and make sure that we come back to these almost as a, you know, as a bookmark to make sure that we're, we're giving you some uh, ideas and some top tips around, uh, around these things. So thank you very much for everyone taking part in those. So as we move the conversation on, um, as I said, one of the highlights um, of the webinar today is talking to um, two of our students i'll say ex students but i've got a feeling they are um still doing some studying with uh, with pitman training so at this point i would love to welcome onto the uh, the webinar adele uh, one of our um students from uh, swords so pitman training in swords adele if you'd like to put your uh, your camera and your microphone and come and join us um so uh, we can hear you, yep, loud and clear. So um, feel free, everybody, to you know say say hi to Adele. Um, and what I'll say is, um, in the interest of time, we would ask you as as you listen to Adele's story, um, put your questions in the Q and A box for us, and um, we'll 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 make sure that Adele gets a chance to answer some of those questions in a few minutes' time. So as you think of the question, write it down. Don't save it up to the end because we probably won't have time. Okay, so let me give you a proper introduction, Adele. I'll, I'll, um, so Adele was working in um, childcare, I believe, for a number of years and, and some other roles as well. But you decided that you wanted to kind of break into a medical admin career. And that's when you, you came along to um, Pittman Training. Um, and we, you know, we were delighted to have you as our student there in um, uh, Pittman training in in swords so um, and thank you so much for joining us today and uh, sharing your story with with all of our guests so welcome thank you all right I'm going to stop sharing my screen actually so that people can um, you know just <laughs> listen listen to our, our conversation um, so yeah look, I guess take up the story at what point Adele did you you know decide um, it must have been a you know was it a light bulb moment did you think you know I'm not enjoying my current job or I really you know would have more satisfaction in a medical admin role can you pinpoint when you know when you had that sort of uh, that light bulb moment um for me really it was kind of when as I as you said I was I was in childcare for years and then I was also um, a carer in a healthcare facility so my when I was young my ambition was either to be in a medical field, whether it be a carer or a nurse. So when I went on to do, I went on to do my pre-nursing to try to become a nurse. 
that didn't work out. Not that I didn't pass, I excelled in it all, but I fell in love with a dementia unit and ended up staying there for a few years. <laughs> but I still wanted to stay in the medical sector, but didn't want to continue being a carer. So ideally I like computers. So hand in hand, put them both together, which is the medical admin job, admin or anything like that, you know, the kind of way. Yeah. And so that was my kind of turning point going, I don't want to leave. I still have passion for the caring side of medical, but I don't want to be doing the 12 hour shifts anymore <laughs> or yeah. rotation shifts, you know? And so it was kind of a, that was my turning point. That was the win-win for me. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, so you and I have, have spoken quite a, quite a lot lately and you, you've shared your, your story with me, which um, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed because it takes a lot of courage. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people on the webinar today in, you know, in the position that you were just one or two years ago, um, thinking, you know, I'd, I'd like to pursue this career, but maybe I'm not sure how. Um, I, I don't know if you spotted the, you know, you were listening in on those um, poll results there and you could see... Um, most people are, are concerned about not having the experience, you know, that, yeah. that seems to be, you know, almost overwhelming, you know, that uh, maybe I, I can't get these jobs because of lack of experience or lack of skills. Yeah. Did, presumably those thoughts crossed your mind as well. Was that something you had to yeah. really get, get your head around? They still do because there's always going to be someone that can is probably more experienced than you, like mm -hmm. has been doing it probably a few years. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's down to the person themselves. I know like a lot of them said, uh, confidence is not a thing for them. So that's brilliant. You can sell yourself in an interview. They're going to be able to see you face to face of who you are. So mm -hmm. don't bring in, think that, oh, because I don't have enough experience, they're going to meet you face to face and they're going to see she has a bit of bite in her. She has the get up and go in her. I like her ambition. I like her speak and how she deals with scenarios. So the experience is one thing, but there's also other factors that bring into play that they will see in you. So I don't think the people should be too concerned about yeah. the experience because they will see you for who you are. And if they want you, they'll take you. Yeah. With or without that's... experience. <laughs> Hey, look, I think I think that's brilliant advice. And uh, and you're you're super confident. And uh, we would always you know, that's kind of rule number one, isn't it is really yeah. be confident and believe believe in yourself. Um, mm. So we should probably talk about, um, you know, the the reason you enrolled with Pittman training as well, because that must have, you know, taken a lot of courage as well to, you know, it's a big undertaking, isn't it almost that mm -hmm. going back to school, you know, um, in, in, <laughs> investing in, in investing in your own development. So, um, what made you choose Pittman and what made you choose the medical secretary diploma that you ended up doing? Well, the medical secretary one was, as I said, like I wanted to stay in the medical field, just not doing the 12 hour shifts as a care anymore, but I still wanted to be with people conversing and stuff. And I love computers. So that's the reason I chose um, the medical uh, secretarial course. And the reason I chose Pitman was because actually at the time I was still working full time, but like that still wanted to excel in my career and make steps. And because it worked around me, I could work from home if needed to be, especially going from a 12 hour shift to come home and sit at a computer can be very hard, but or, or to go into the college itself, you know, you had that option to work from home and the girls in, in swords were amazing. They were only a phone call or a text away if I had any troubles or whenever needed, you know, that kind of way. So for me, it was the, just that like I could take my time with it as well. There was no one on my back. Yeah. Like, you know, when you're in school, cause it is dreaded to go back to school. You're like, oh, do I really want to sit another three years in school? Do I really want to do this? Where there was no, there was no pressure of that with Pittman. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just like, oh, when you, when you have time, drop us a text or give us a bell if you're stuck, you know, that kind of way. And you could pop in, everyone's so friendly and welcoming that it made you more at ease to progress, that you weren't under such strenuous pressure yeah. of people being on your back like you were in school or in college. You have deadline days and stuff like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You didn't have, with Pitman, it was very lenient, very, yeah. very lenient. It helped you as a person, because every, every person is individually different. So my, my story could be totally different to someone's. It could be the exact same. Yeah. But they were so understanding of what was going on, especially with the current climate. Like I've worked 
full time now through, through the whole COVID and mm -hmm. it couldn't be more than understanding for me to give me extra time to sit my exams, trying to sit them at home or trying to get into the college. Like mm -hmm. they were just so understanding. Hey, look, um, that's really nice feedback. And, and um, I think, you, you know, you, you've just kind of outlined, not only did you have a full-time job, not only were we all dealing with this pandemic lockdown situation, but you, you managed to, to complete your diploma, but in your own time, self-paced and, and that whole self-study principle, as you say, there, there's no pressure from us because we, you know, we, we consider ourselves um, a provider of further education, but on your terms, you know, and that's really important because um, college or university, as an example, uh, you know, there, there is a real, um, I guess, c convention, you know, there, there are set days, set times, mm -hmm. set deadlines, and, and that's great. That's how it needs to be. But when you've got a busy life, a full time job, children and other responsibilities, mm -hmm. you know, you need to be able to um, slot it in on your own terms. And that's that's mm -hmm. kind of what you're, you're saying. I think you should be really, you know, really proud of what you've done, Adele. And so in the interest of time, I know you're you're not finished yet, are you? In terms of you're still very much on a journey from your, if you like, previous career, your yeah. your role now. If you just want to tell us quickly what your job is today. So I still work, I actually work in a healthcare facility. So I'm still in the medical side, but I am not actually a medical secretary. I am accounts, admin and receptionist. If you could put that all into one little container, <laughs> yep. that's what I do. So yeah. I am pursuing to go hopefully do um, medical secretary in HSC or something like that. But at present, I um, have finished my medical secretary course. I was just waiting on the diploma to come out to me. And I done the Socrates module. And I'm probably going to continue on with Pitman and do Sage and payroll as well. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You, Why you not? Just hunger, do them all. <laughs> hunger for learning. And um, yeah. if I can just remind everybody as well, that, you know, this is your, your moment to sort of put questions to Adele on the uh, Q&A function. Um, so if you do that in the next kind of 30 seconds, if there's anything in, in Adele's story that has, you know, resonated with you and you want to kind of understand it a bit better, um, then please put your questions there. But uh, no, so that's, that's, that's wonderful, Adele. And I think that was why we, you know, we were so looking forward to you joining this discussion today is because you know you you've got you've got a plan you've got a you, you know you've got a direction that you're pursuing um i love the fact that you know all those years of um you know child care and the pre-nursing has really set you up for what you're doing now and what you intend to do moving forward as well and and uh, you mentioned there your you know perhaps ideal role would be medical secretary in the hse so the mm -hmm. um uh, that stands for health service executive, right? Um, so in, in Ireland, and that, that would be your kind of ideal, ideal job. So uh, in terms of that, when do you think would be the right time to, um, you know, to, to start applying for those jobs? Have you got a plan to, to start applying to, to those types of roles? I'm one of these, as soon as kind of ha I have my search and it's real, then I'm like, right, let's do this. Do you know that kind of way I'd like to have it physically in my hand to say, okay, I'm qualified. Now, bite the bullet, send the CV out. Like, don't be afraid. Do you know what I mean? What's the harm in doing it? They can just come back and say, oh, it's, you're not the right person at the right time. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Just send it. So hopefully now um, it's next week, I think I get my cert. So hopefully next week I'll start applying for. Oh, wow. Program. Okay. That's um, pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> Good, good luck with that. And I absolutely know, you know, no doubt that you'll, uh, you'll be getting offers and you'll be invited to interviews very quickly. So I'm going to ask my colleague, Yowie, just to help me out at this point. Um, okay. So, hi, yeah, Yowie. Hi, Welcome. Do we have hi. Um, yeah, we've, any we've, questions? We've had, yeah, we've had a couple of questions. Um, one, I think you've maybe already answered, Adele, which is, did you do the training online while you were working? Yes, um, you did that, but you were able to go into the centre as well. I think one of the questions is, um, what do you think is the biggest challenge that um, you're facing in getting into the role that you want? At first, I did always think that was because when everyone was talking about the work experience, for me, that was the biggest um, kind of like that was going against me. That was the biggest one that was going against me. But then I think of all the factors that I've, jobs I've had in my life, they've all been in a medical background. So I don't think they would class that against me because 
I've stayed in one sector the whole way through and at, in the position, the job I'm in at the moment, I am getting experience being a receptionist, which would be like a medical secretary or a medical receptionist in a GP or in a surgery or anything like that. They all have the same characteristics of jobs, filing, maintaining, scanning, all that emails, uh, switchboard, they all have those. So now I don't think like that anymore. Now I think more positively about myself. I bring more stuff to the table than just experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the final one was, um, do you know whether medical admin staff have to work during night shifts like medical staff do as well? I'm aware of over in Ireland here, um, no. I When I was speaking about shift work, it was more as carers and nurses. So they would mm -hmm. do 12 hour rotation shifts. So it would be Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in Saturday, Sunday, but that I'm aware of, if you're in like HSB medical secretary, that's Monday to Friday. And if you're in a GP surgery doing kind of receptionist, that's down to the discretion of the job. They could open Saturdays, but most places that I'm aware of, the jobs that I have seen aren't, um, aren't weekends. So no, it's kind of a Monday to Friday job, which okay. is lovely. <laughs> okay, that's great. Paul, we'll, we'll continue to answer some of the questions online as well, but uh, I think that, that's it for the moment. Thank you very much, Yowie. And um, yeah, may I say a, a big, big thank you uh, to you, Adele. Um, really love your story. Um, I know to you, it's just kind of, it's just normal. It's what you've been, you know, living for the last year or two. But I know for the, you know, hundreds of people listening in, um, that that sort of uh, that insight will be really valuable. So thank you so much for for sharing that. And um, we'll make sure you get your certificate. So I'll uh, I'll chase that I'll chase that up for you. And um, best of luck on behalf of you know all of us here uh, with your um, applications next week. If we can help, just let us know. Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much. All right, you take care. And thank you because you're at work now, aren't you? So we'll let you get I back am. to your work. I'm in the office, Hayden. <laughs> um, that's great commitment. Look, thank you so much. Okay, no problem, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So um, hopefully everyone can see. Thank you again to Adele. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, there's, uh, I guess, a bit of a summary there. And you'll get these slides um, or you'll get a copy of the recording. Um, but a, a really lovely summary of uh, Adele's story. So um, what I would like to do now is um, introduce my next guest, um, Noel Sloan. So Noel, please um, turn your camera and your microphone. Hello, how are you? Good. Um, good, thank you for joining us. And as uh, our guests can probably see, you are at work at the moment in one of the treatment rooms in a GP surgery. So um, again, absolutely uh, fantastic that you could join us today. And, um, you know, similar to, to Adele, you know, there was a, a point in your career where you decided you wanted to pursue medical admin. So I'd love to um, ask you some questions about that in in a moment and um yeah just thank you so much for, for for joining let me stop sharing my screen here and then um and the same same principle applies as well to all of our guests if you want to um put questions for noel um please put them in the q a box and uh, myself and yaoi will try and come to the uh, the main questions if we have time so, um, so Noel, look, if you want to sort of um, take up the story, take us back, you know, to, um, you know, your early career, what, what made you decide to pursue medical admin? Was there a moment that you knew that that was the way you wanted to go? COVID. <laughs> ah, I, <right. laughs> I was working as a beautician um, for 10 years in the same company. Um, and obviously COVID happened and I started the training, I think it was about a week before the very first lockdown in Ireland. So March, I think of last year. Um, so kind of, I suppose on the run up to that, I was thinking of wanting to do something different. And obviously the beauty sector has closed and briefly reopened, but has pretty much been closed for the past year. Um, and I just, kind of when I was deciding, okay, what am I going to do? I kind of thought towards what do they always need? What will never close? Mm -hmm. And medical, medical, anything medical admin, secretarial, I kind of knew would be a, a safe enough bet. Yeah. No, I think I, I think everybody would would agree with that, and I, I dare say there's there's people on this call in, in exactly the position that you were in 12 months ago. You know, because I think you said you were you know you, you were really happy with your job, and it was you know it was it was serving you well, and the industry was you know was really buoyant until 
March 16th last year. I, I think we all remember it so well, don't we? Um, so yeah, thank you. And, and, and look, so what did, what did you do then? So COVID happened, I guess, um, you know, the world turned upside down. So you immediately decided to, to gain, you know, to, to study, was that your decision? A friend of mine was actually had finished the medical secretary course with Pittman training. So it was kind of on my radar for a while anyway, to be honest. She had gotten a job what, before she had even finished the course. She had gotten a job out of it. Um, so when she had gotten on so well, I kind of thought, well, if it worked for her. <laughs> it could work for me. Yeah. Um, so I contacted its Cork in Ireland, um, the training centre that I'm kind of dealing with. So I contacted the girls there. Um, I got to go in. At the very start, they were still open. So I was able to go in and meet with one of the course advisors and kind of go through what the different options are that would potentially suit me. Um, and then we kind of just settled on the medical secretary diploma that it would be right for what I wanted. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so you started the diploma, was it March or April last year? I think it would have been April when I officially actually started work, but I was a, I was able to go into the centre, so it would have been March when I kind of made the decision. Yeah, yeah, and because I guess you you you'd been doing um, your job as a beautician, so did that, so that stopped, that obviously couldn't continue. So you had quite a lot of time to dedicate to your your studies, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, I had no excuse to not get it done. Really, it was I was off, I was not working. Um, I went into work. I think for about a month um, when everything kind of reopened for a while in July or August. But other than that, I was off. So I was able to just kind of log in every morning and just get a little bit done. Yeah, yeah. And and um, so you, you and um, Adele, who we were just talking to, did exactly the same diploma. Um, mm -hmm. I know in, in Adele's case, uh, because she was working full time and juggling other things, um, I think the diploma took her longer than a year because she was maybe doing just a few hours each week. In your case, when did you finish the uh, the diploma? I finished it. It's probably nearly a month ago now. Like I have my I have my diploma and everything. I'm done. Um, I did take a little bit of a break <laughs> for a while yeah. over Christmas and stuff. But other than that, yeah, it did. It took me under a year to get it all done. Yeah, well, I think you, you said to me when we last spoke that um, you were sort of motoring through it when, uh, you know, when when um, you first enrolled and then you got the job. Right. So, you you, you know, we probably need to talk about uh, yeah. about that in a moment. But because you got the job, of course, your available time, you know, kind of disappeared and, and, and uh, you, you know, it meant you, you had to then try and finish the diploma as well as working full time. But so you're actually sat in um, in a GP surgery now and your job is what's your job today i'm the manager of the surgery fantastic and that um so we're, we're we're skipping a chapter though aren't we because that wasn't the job that wasn't the job you applied for no um i applied for a part-time secretary role um it was I, it was august of last year um so the second we we're in the second lockdown in ireland and things were kind of not looking good for hair and beauty and i kind of thought I'll just go for it. Um, I did a CV workshop with my course advisor in Pittman and I just started applying for, I start, actually didn't even start applying for jobs. I just started handing out CVs everywhere. Um, and yeah, it worked. Um, so I got an interview in the practice that I'm in now. And I originally started just part-time as a secretary, just kind of helping the staff that were here already. Um, and I just went from there. And, and, and you know, that's, that's great. And um yeah, from a part-time, you know, admin role to the practice mm -hmm. manager in a, a short space of, of months. I mean, that, that's absolutely incredible and, and, you know, great testament to you and your, your character. Um, and in terms of, um, did you find any difficulty with your lack of experience or, or do you think the, the diploma helped? Uh, do you think the, the time as a beautician helped? Both. Like, I mean, what we covered in the, the diploma is very relevant to what I'm doing. So we covered Socrates, which is the software GPs in Ireland anyway, definitely use the most surgeries use it. Um, all of the IT skills that you do in the diploma, you're kind of starting and you're somewhat comfortable with what you're doing. Um, and then the beautician work, it would have been, I suppose, communication and people skills, which is so important in any secretarial or receptionist role where you're dealing with the public or you're dealing with like I wouldn't say customers, but patients, you know, you you kind of need to be able to communicate effectively with them. Similar when I was working as a beautician, like half the job is how you deal with people, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, and you're so uh, we we asked our guests, you know, um, right at the beginning, you know, what what, what do they think the uh, I guess uh, a day in the life of a of a medical administrator looks like, um, and and that's so broad, isn't it? Because some medical admin roles are what I would call um, behind the scenes, you know, kind of um, back office. Maybe mm-hmm. you wouldn't you wouldn't really um, talk or, or interface with uh, with the patients, but in your case, you're in a busy um, GP surgery, so your you know communication skills are absolutely paramount, aren't they? You, um, and th- am I right in saying you're dealing with people all day long? Oh, there's no getting away from them. <laughs> Even when you are in the back office, like our phones are so busy, our email server is so busy. No matter kind of what you're doing during the day, you're always kind of touching base with the patients. So there's always an element of that. I would imagine in most GP surgeries, even the role in the back office as such, you're going to be some way kind of involved with patients. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And um, I, I'm I'm assuming that you're enjoying it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And we and we can tell, and that's and that's great. Um, so look, I'm going to ask my colleague Yowie to to jump in again, if uh, if that's okay. Yowie, I'd, I'd love to see yeah. what questions have, have come in for uh, Noel. Yeah, really, lots of lots of good compliments as well, Noel, in terms of your success in the role. So, uh, but one of the questions was, and these are two combined, was were there a lot of uh, jobs out there being advertised at the time, and what type of questions were you asked in the interviews? Um, there actually weren't to be honest I think of all of the kind of jobs that I applied I think I applied for two um whereas I think I handed out probably between 15 and 20 CVs um I got three interviews in person and I got one phone interview out of all of my applications so it definitely it paid off to just kind of send the CVs to any local surgeries um that I had addresses for I just put them in the post um, the interviews then, I suppose your kind of normal job interview questions, the biggest one for a GP surgery that I suppose you wouldn't get in another job interview were kind of patient scenarios, a bit of a, a what would you do if type of situation. So if a patient came in and had X, Y or Z or wanted X, Y or Z, what would your gut reaction be? What would you do? Um, whereas this was that is very job specific that you wouldn't necessarily get in another interview. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Paul, that's it. I'm just conscious of time. So yeah, um, yeah. We'll, yeah, answer, we'll continue to answer the other ones online and uh, let you carry on. Thank you very much, Yowie. And um, Noel, thank you very much because, um, again, short conversation, but I, I, I absolutely know that uh, you will have um, given people a huge help in terms of their, their planning and their thinking towards a, a medical admin um, Uh, medical medical admin career so look thank you so much for giving up your time you're at work so we need to let you get back (laughs) thanks very much all right and good luck with everything thanks a million bye okay bye-bye bye-bye so um so there we are guys and thank you for um sticking with us as well we've got uh, just a few more slides and a few more things we want to um let you know about um but i hope you enjoyed uh, adele and noel's stories there So um, this is really just for reference. I wanted to um, let everybody know that um, there are lots and lots. I mean, the list is endless in terms of what medical admin roles there are. And I guess there's different routes. You know, you've heard of a couple of different routes uh, from our last two guests. Um, So it it may not be that you jump straight into a medical admin role. There might be, you know, think about the... um, the peripherals of the healthcare industry it could be, um, you know, working in a dental practice, or as um, Noel mentioned, working in in the beauty industry. That could be a really great way into the uh, the medical environment. So you've got public as well. We talk a bit about HSE, NHS, the public um, sector, but also there's lots and lots of private routes as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, really open your mind when, when you get to the point that you're applying and you're looking for jobs, don't be just wedded to one thing. You know, I guess if you're wedded to the NHS, you might, there might be a, a different way, a different route to get there. So just a few and, and, we should also point out that there are still lots and lots of roles within, I guess, COVID and testing and and, and the vaccine centres, um, some voluntary. So you might even find that, you know, if you get in there quickly, uh, there'll be a, you know, maybe a month or, or a few months just volunteering. Uh, it'd be amazing on your CV in terms of experience. I also wanted to mention AMSPAR as well. Some of you may be familiar with what this is. 
Um, but we're partnered up with uh, AMSPAR, very proud to be. Um, this is the Association of Medical Secretaries, Practice Managers, Administrators and Receptionists. They've been running for uh, nearly 60 years. And um, it's all about promoting qualifications for people entering the medical admin roles. And they do a great job of, uh, I guess, um, regulating that, you know, that as an industry. Um, and these are the reasons why you might want to get a qualification from AMSPAR, because it's recognized, shows that you've got determination, you're investing in yourself. It's a real proof of standard. It's like the, the, the rubber stamp on your CV that you've, uh, you know, you understand uh, medical terminology and what it's all about. And it's a great resource as well. So feel free to jump on their website. It's a great resource. Okay. Um, just a few kind of top tips uh, before I bring in my next guest. Um, so again, you might need to think slightly differently when you're applying for public sector versus private sector. My key sort of shout out is um, when you're applying for public sector is application tracking systems, uh, which up until recently, I didn't know anything about. Um, but this is effectively where a computer is vetting your CV on your application, not necessarily a person. Um, I guess the world that we now live in is all about search optimization. And, and I, I suppose ATS is, is a form of that. It, it's scanning your application and your CV to make sure that it's got the right keywords. So a bit like when we were back at school and the teacher always used to tell us that the answer is often in the question Question. The point here is the the you know what they're looking for is in that um, job uh, job advert. So make sure that your application really um, talks to all of the things that they're looking for. So if they want to hear great communication, if they want to hear medical terminology, if they want to hear you know great Microsoft proficiencies. Make sure it's in your application because it it may just be a, a case of getting the words uh, in there. Okay, and a few other bits and pieces. Jobsmedical.co.uk is just a great resource for uh, private and public sector uh, vacancies. LinkedIn is your friend. So make sure you've got a wonderful LinkedIn profile um, and you can, you know, you maybe apply through both routes as well. Um, so I'll leave it there. But uh, what I will say is the goal is to get interviewed. I think um, Noelle made the point there. She, you know, putting lots of CVs, lots of applications. Her goal was to get an interview first and foremost. Um, because if you've got an interview, then you might be able to get that job. But uh, I'll leave that with you. And just a few other um, tips as well. And I just asked my, my, my next guest, um, Alexis, to, to join us in a moment. Um, but if you again, you're thinking, I haven't got the experience and, and I want to um, show that I'm you know, working towards these, these types of jobs, then you might look at an admin or reception role in a different sector. Um, that would that would look really, really good when you start applying for a receptionist role to be able to say, do you know what? I have been a receptionist for a year, albeit in, let's say, a um, childcare environment or, or a play center or something like this. You know, your ability to deal with people uh, and care for people uh, will uh, will shine through. And there's lots of volunteering op um, opportunities, lots of charities. And what I noticed both with the HSE and the NHS is they have their own charities as well. So you might even be able to do some uh, volunteering work for those types of charities. Um, so I'll leave that, leave that with you. Um, so yeah, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to bring Alexis into the conversation at this point, if I can. Um, Alexis is um, part of our team. She works as a course advisor for Pittman Training. And um, yeah, she's an expert at uh, talking, pe talking to people about their careers and what they're hoping to achieve and how, I guess, studying with Pittman Training might be able to, uh, to help. Hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You okay? Yeah. All good. Thank you very much, Alexis. And um, so before we dive into our conversation, I've just put some um, slides up here. And these are as of um, yesterday, actually, as mm -hmm. of yesterday, these are real jobs um, advertised on Indeed, just as uh, one of the many job sites. And I've just circled a few things that we've been talking about. You know, um, the successful candidate will possess previous medical secretarial experience or being the operative word, or a medical secretary qualification, which I think is, is what, you know, what we're really trying to stress today is, you know, I think half the audience said, yeah, but lack of experience is going to get in my way. 
And we're saying it doesn't have to. You might be able to make up for that with with a qualification. Do, do you agree, Alexis? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, you've got to think of it this way. Everybody who's currently working within an admin role within the NHS was once an applicant with no prior experience of working within a healthcare setting. So, you know, we can help to bridge that gap. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just circled on this other one um, that, you know, Microsoft uh, applications must be proficient with Microsoft. Um, and that's, you know, that's really important to a lot of these uh, job roles. You can sort of see the salaries on here as well. I think, you know, ranging sort of 22, 25,000 per, per annum. Um, and the reason I circled this one is because audio transcription, um, and we'll come on to that, Alexis, what that means and why that's so important. Um, what else have we got down here? Um, you applicants should have, that's interesting, ap applicants should have a secretarial qualification. And they've even, this is the uh, NHS, yeah, this is the NHS Scotland mm -hmm. that have said, and it also needs to be AMSPA, which is quite specific, but the good news is uh, that's where Pittman training can come in. And this reference here, if I'm not mistaken, is another way of saying you've got to be a very good typist and you've got to have fast typing skills. So um, Alexis, kind of over to you, you know, we're talking about um, diplomas, we're talking about medical terminology courses, but, but if somebody, you know, came to, um, your particular Pittman training center and said, look, I'm maybe I'm not working at the moment. I'm not, I'm not in a job and I'd love to work in the medical admin field. Where, where would you start with that person? I would say, let's take a look at either the, the medical secretarial or the medical administrator diplomas um, with, with the AMSPAR qualification. Um, they've essentially been designed, they assume no prior knowledge. So they're perfect for somebody with, with no prior experience. And we look basically at what the job advertisements are asking for. So, and then we design our diplomas backwards, if you like. So we'll cover those fast and accurate touch typing skills. We'll cover, um, you know, speaking the language, the medical terminology. We'll actually show you how to do um, medical documents, you know? So it's almost like giving you a bit of work experience without actually giving you a job. Um, mm -hmm. So you could print off um, some of the work that you produced, you know, those medical letters, and you could go along to your interviews and say, look, you know, although I haven't got that prior experience, this is the standard of work I can produce for you because I am Pittman trained and I'm AMSPA trained as well. Fantastic. And um, for, for those that, uh, that might not, um, you know, might not, understand what what does medical audio transcription what does that mean so it's where you would um have your headset on and you would be listening to um letters documents that have been dictated by um you know doctor or, or consultant and you've got a foot pedal under the desk so you're typing away typing out out the letter listening your left foot i think it is if i remember my my training rightly will um uh rewind if you miss anything and your right foot um, start fast forward. So it's a bit like playing the piano, but at 60 words per minute. Yeah, no, I like that. And, um, but, this, but this is what employers are looking for, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. is, is that ability to um, quickly, I guess people want applicants that can slot straight in, you know, and if you've got that experience and, and, and you can type at 60 words uh, per minute, which um, which I have to say I can't. Um, so I, I, you know, I need to brush up. But um, yeah, no, really good advice. And I've just put on the screen here the sorts of we, at Pittman training. We're not a one size fits all. So we don't have just one diploma or one course. I've, in fact, I've only put a few on here, Alexis. But mm -hmm. you know, there's there's bite size for people that just want to sort of dip their toe in. And then there's the you know fully fledged, probably at the top there. You know, the diplomas that we offer. Um, but yeah, just you know, what sort of options are there if somebody comes along to Pittman training? Well, um, for example, you, you mentioned there that somebody might have got um, some reception or admin experience, but within a different sector. That's fantastic. So you might not need certain elements of, of the full diploma. So we could cherry pick individual modules, you know, teach you how to touch type, teach you how to use the digital transcriber for the audio side of things and, and give you the, the lingo of, of medical terminology, you know, and just and just work towards those. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I'm conscious on time. I just um, I want to uh, keep you keep you on board for just a moment. Um, 
I, I wanted to just put a real snapshot as well in here for people about one of our most popular courses, which sits inside some of these diplomas. Uh, and this, this builds towards the AMSPAR qualification, doesn't it? So um, this is the Pittman Medical Terminology course. Um, yeah. I'm not going to pronounce all of these names because I'll probably fail. Um, but this is, uh, this is the sort of thing that the, I'm just going to rattle through these really quickly. But you can see um, it's teaching you, you know, the right words and the right terminology that you'll need to use to pass your um, AMSPAR um, level two qualification or, or, you know, or one of their other qualifications. Um, so it just gives you an idea of the, the sort of depth and the quality that some of our content goes into. So um, if you, you know, what would be your sort of final thoughts, Alexis, your top tips for people thinking, yeah, I might be, you know, looking to, to study with Pittman. Maybe that is part of the, uh, part of the plan. What, what would be your advice to people? Uh, pick up the phone, get in touch with your local training center, get onto the website, you know, speak with one of the course advisors. Um, I would definitely recommend, you know, maybe booking a visit to the training center and having a free demonstration. Um, we can help to design something that fits in terms of how much time you've got, what your budget is, you know, the existing skills that, that you might already possess. Um, if you prefer, you can also do Zoom consultations as well. Uh, so, so there's the option there just in case you, you're not able to make it into um, a training centre at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly summed up, Alexis. And what I would say as well, because you are super modest, super humble, um, but I, I often refer to you as a real career consultant you know you're not just helping people to choose the right course or to choose the right study program you're you're helping with the you know the the plan you're helping with the cv the confidence searching for jobs applying for jobs um and i don't think you know we 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 give you enough credit for that so um i just want to you know for people thinking you know um what what does this all mean you know we you know pitman training will support you in every uh, every way possible so yeah do find one of our um training centers alexis is absolutely right i'm just going to roll on the slides um so thank you alexis for all of your input um, Pleasure. And really, I'm conscious that we've gone slightly over, so I'm just going to sort of wrap up and uh, and let you carry on with your day. Um, as Alexis mentioned, we have got um, over 80 training centres, predominantly in the UK and Ireland, and um, across Europe, and uh, indeed in Kenya and Pakistan as well. Um, so. Um, Jump on the uh, the Pitman Training website and you'll be able to find your nearest training centre with uh, lockdown, you know, hopefully coming to to an end. You know, you're you're welcome. Our centres are all open now, by the way. So, you, you know, although you might need to book an appointment, you can come and see us face to face. If you'd still like to do um, Zoom calls, that's absolutely fine with us or phone calls. Um, we cover more than just medical, but I'll let you sort of read that at your own leisure. Uh, we have more than 10,000 students a year. So, uh, and we've been doing this, by the way, for over 180 years. I, I can't believe we've, uh, we've been talking for all this time and I've not mentioned our history or heritage, but maybe you're already familiar with uh, Pittman as a, uh, as a training company. Um, so finally, I guess, you know, my, my next steps for you, if I can move my slides on. There we go is um, a big thank you to Adele, Noel and Alexis for uh, joining us and providing some insight. Um, I've certainly really enjoyed the discussion. I hope it's added value to, uh, to everybody. Um, we've been trying to answer all the questions throughout the, uh, the time, um, but what we'll do, if we've missed any, we'll come back to them afterwards and we'll, uh, we'll drop you a message and we'll try and answer your question. Um, all of our local training centres will um, will send you a thank you email as well. So um, if you're thinking, well, yeah, I'm kind of interested in in having a further conversation with Pittman, don't worry because uh, if you check your your email inbox later on, you'll probably have a thank you email from us, and we can start the conversation from there. Or if you're you know kind of raring to go, jump on the website. We've put the uh, web address up here. Book a career consultation. You know, it's probably all of about five clicks and you can book yourself in. And uh, we'd love to talk to you about your, your plans and your career journey. Um, so look, thank you so much for joining us today. Sorry we've run over time, um, but we really hope that's been of value and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you and goodbye.